So I got a question from a maintenance manager, brand new one, says, hey, Joe, in a lot of your videos, you're talking about deploying free actions to get the flywheel of reliability turning, get that culture of reliability going, and then that promotes future invest investment in things that we may need to buy, like new instrumentation, uh, maybe new people, maybe it's training that you need to send people to. So I got that challenge from somebody, said, hey, Joe, where's this list of free things that you can do. So, hey, I've got dozens and dozens of videos, uh, 310 actually, uh, that are out there with uh, some fine points. But hey, I'll just make one video with 20 of them, 20 of them that I thought of here in just a couple minutes. Before I get started though, I get comments on these curtains all the time and they say, hey, what's, what's going on with these curtains? Well, this is down in my basement. Uh, I've got a theater room here with a 130 inch screen I'm looking at over here. It's pretty cool. I've had it for 15 years. And we got kind of an African theme going on. You know, here's an example of some of the things and that I have here. And that's kind of like a uh, uh, animal skin print there. So, hey, that's kind of what's going on. More than you needed to know, but I get asked. If you wouldn't believe what I get asked on this channel. So, hey, let's go through. Uh, 23 things you can do. Any one of these, you could start doing Monday. Okay, now I don't recommend doing all 20. Uh, <laughs> that's just too many things. But you pick one, two, three of these things to start. Try to knock two or three, four of these off a month as they make sense at your site. So, hey, I'm going to rattle them off pretty quickly. Okay, number one, PM optimization. This was huge at my plant. You're doing a lot of PMs, most likely at your plant, that add no value. You're doing things weekly that you can do every month. Things you're doing every month that you could do every quarter. Things that you're doing with two people you could do with one. You know, there's, I mean, this is huge. PM optimization. Is it based on failure mode, the actions you're taking? Number two, focus on a few. I come into plants and they say, here's the 60 things we're working on. And at the end of the year, it's always one, two, or three things that kill the plant that are the, the number one, two, and three things. I say focus on things like, hey, we're going to focus on our motor PMs. We're going to focus on doing lube, um, all of our lubes. We're going to do them right, and we're going to do every PM on lube. Maybe it's on predictive maintenance tools. You're going to uh, make sure that you free your people up to use your existing preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance tools. Okay, number three. Try for 100% PM client compliance. I kind of alluded to this a little bit on lubes. Uh, so, hey, gosh, if you're only 50% compliant on your PMs, make sure that you're 100% on lube or whatever is your issue year after year, decade after decade. Number four, make one of your craftspersons, uh, a very knowledgeable one, very experienced one, a kid or stager. So they put together the parts for the job. They help you plan the job and they stage it out at the work group can dramatically increase your wrench time and the efficiency of your existing people, freeing up people to work on planned work. Number five, creating expectations of your planners. You have one, two, three planners at your plant. I don't know how many you have, but tell them their job is to anticipate wrench time detractors. So how to make the job go more efficient just by thinking it through. Uh, very easy to do. <laughs> That's a piece of paper. Number six, audit wrench time and waste. Go out, make it part of the expectations to go out and see how efficient your crews are. What a radical idea. See problems that they have, waste that they have to deal with. This never has anything to do with the uh, work ethic of your crew. It's all of your system that they're working on. Number seven, create a go and see culture. Do you go and see some of your PMs? Do you go and see your failures, or you just talk about them in the conference room. Oh, this happened. Oh, we'll have to recover. No, go and see, talk to the people, see the physical evidence. Huge, huge one here. This changes the game, actually. Uh, number eight, have operations own reliability. Uh, that's a personnel discussion. Operations, you own it. You can't use them because they do own it. Who owns the reliability of your car? You do, not the mechanic at the shop. You do. Uh, number nine, Create, a, you know, if your outages keep getting pushed out, production keeps pushing out outages because of production demands. Hey, conduct, ask for a 90 day experiment. Say hey, for the next 90 days, let's have our outages. Let's make them instead of, you know, they need to be 24 hours long, say. Commit to say, okay, hey, we're going to do these in 18 hours, but I want you to lock them in because I'm going to train my crew like an Indianapolis pit crew. Uh, to do them more efficiently, but let's have them on the schedule that uh, maintenance and the reliability people recommend. A 90-day experiment. 
Um, um, number 10, involve crafts in the outage planning. So if you've got a big outage next week, one of these 18-hour ones that I've been talking about, hey, two weeks ahead of time, pull in your crews, a, a sampling of your crews, and say, here's how we're going to lock and tag this. Here's how we're going to do a precision job at this. Here's how we're going to stage. Here's the equipment we're going to use. So involve the crafts in that. Number 11, train people on lubrication basics. Go on YouTube. And lubrication basics. Hey, folks, this is the kind of lube we should use in. This is the frequency we, see, frequency we should be using. Uh, number 12, train them on how to install bearings. You know, uh, again, from YouTube, I'm not talking about they need to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, get a PhD in bearing installation. But, hey, let's, let's make sure they know the basics. There's a lot of great information out there. You can also have one of you person on your staff become an expert in these two and then have them train. That could be a performance expectation for maybe an engineer or a supervisor to become an expert on lube and, um, you know, uh, just be responsible for training everybody. So number 13, separate planned and unplanned work crews. This is huge. Most people, they, they do all the unplanned work and then at all the fires of the day. And then at the end of the day, if they have any time, they'll do any planned work. Well, you never end up in, with any time doing any planned work. And then you just set landmines for tomorrow to run into, next week, next month. So separate those crew. If you have 10 people, maybe this is one person, one person that is going to be 100% planned. All they're going to do is work on getting their motors lubed, uh, or the motors, uh, the maintenance on the motors and, motor and, uh, and the lubes done. Maybe that's all you're doing. I'm telling you, you'll have less problems next week if you separate your planned and unplanned crews. Assign equipment owners. Did this at a plant. Didn't add any people, but they had 10 people, for example. And we assigned one person to sewing machines, one person to maybe it was a CNC machine. And they were responsible for approving that machine, owning the equipment maintenance plan. Free thing to do, equipment owners. Uh, full kitting of jobs. Most of the people, when they plan a job and it's to change out a pump, they have a pump on a skid and they say, there's the, there's the job. We got it. We got the parts for it. What about the gasket material? What about the shim stock? What about a new coupling? What about some key stock? What's anything they could possibly need to do that job? Full kitting is a huge deal. People run, mechanics and electricians running back and forth to the shop or going to other shops in your plant or waiting on something to be delivered, uh, expedited from the, the town you live in uh, is a huge deal. Number 16 is a touch plan, one by one. You're driving culture change here with reliability. How are you going to convert people to your way of thinking and give, uh, you know, your way of improving and delivering a reliability culture one on one? It doesn't work in masses. You can't give a speech to your 10 mechanics, for example, and convert all of them. You got to have a plan to reach out and convert one person at a time. Uh, I've made a previous video on that, actually. Uh, uh, look for it. Uh, number 17, require observation, specifically chalk circle observation, uh, for all changes. So your leadership team at your plant, your leadership team in maintenance and reliability, whatever it is, require front first-hand observation to be part of the data set, not just averages, not just KPIs. Hey, this PM on this piece of equipment, I've watched the PM be executed three times. So, you know, if your mean time between failure is getting smaller, are you doing the PMs with precision, okay? And uh, that's a bad assumption uh, to have that you, uh, just from the conference room, uh, if it's not observed, okay? Free. 18, the communication of wins and connecting the dots. So when you do something that's, you know, proactive and, and prevents a motor failure, for example. And last year you had 10 motor failures, 10, the year before 10, the year before 10, and you've changed your PM practices and now you're only having four, make sure you communicate that win to people, get people excited. Once you get people excited, they'll start offering more ideas. There'll be a little more enthusiasm in what they do. So that's something free you can do to do uh, accelerate a culture change. 19, make planners, make a planner from existing headcount. You know, if you have 20 mechanics, would you rather have 20 mechanics just doing whatever they do? Or would you rather have 19 mechanics and one planner with the planner getting all the parts, pieces, and coordination together for those 19 people? Where are you gonna get more of a reliability culture? Clearly with a planner. Uh, 
seven times more efficient is what a lot of people use. I've seen that number be 20 times more efficient. And number 20, have a yesterday, today, tomorrow meeting. So this is a meeting, for example, at nine o'clock in the morning, you have all the stakeholders in the room and it's the huddle. That's the football team huddle. You get together and talk about, hey, what did we learn from yesterday? What help do you need to deliver the standard today? So what's in your way? What help do you need? You need to tell me at nine o'clock in the morning, not at the end of the day, what help do you need to be successful and make a commitment? And you do that same thing for tomorrow. Hey, what, what problems do you see hitting the commitment tomorrow? Okay, so a yesterday, today, tomorrow meeting, hugely impactful, free. 20 free items, any one of these things, you could start tomorrow. This is Joe out.